Hello and welcome back. I left you on the previous episode on how to um, update the SSD and boot your Raspberry Pi from the SSD uh, so that we can finally ditch the micro SD and just to use the super fast SSD with the Raspberry Pi. In this episode, it's going to be really, really short. We are going to install Docker. This is the third episode. We will install Docker. Um, if you're not familiar with Docker, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you to go on the docker.com and, and have an idea and watch a couple of videos, uh, document yourself on what Docker is um, and, and because it's really, really important. Well, I'm going to tell you just a couple of simple sentences to try to grasp um, the necessity or not necessarily the necessity, but uh, why Docker is very, very useful, especially with uh, uh, small devices like this one. Um, over the time, you will need to update uh, the Cardano node running on your Raspberry Pi. In order to build and run the Cardano node, you need a set of libraries, as well as um, the uh, compiler, the Haskell compiler that is used to compile the node. Now, the compilers, also known as a great Haskell compiler, GHC, and the Kabbal itself, and uh, that, that is another library required to, to build the Cardano node, they will need to be updated from time to time. And keeping multiple versions of the GHC and Kabul can be cumbersome, uh, very error prone. Um, and this is the reason why I decided from the get go to just forget about installing those libraries and compilers on my operating system, but just defer everything to Docker that allows us to use containers. As the word say, a container is an enclosed space where all the dependencies are included so that we can just take our container, build it, and then run it on our operating system. It's like an operating system inside the operating system. And the containerized, uh, contain containerized operating system contains the specific versions of the libraries, the compilers, and everything that is required to run a specific version of the Cardano node. Since I started to work uh, um, and be a stake pool operator, um, we've gone through two versions of the uh, of Cabal, 3, 3200 and 3400 that is now used for uh, version 126, and two version of the Great Haskell compiler that is actually already changed. I can't remember the specific version, but uh, the version that we are currently using was already adopted for version um, 215, 115, whatever, uh, 215.1. So this is the reason why I'm going to use, the, uh, there is also another reason. The cluster that I'm running uses Kubernetes and Kubernetes only knows how to run containerized uh, workloads. So for me, the problem was actually, um, diff the point of view was completely different. But for me, it's really, really important that uh, if uh, in one month time or two months time, there is a new version of the Cardano node that you have to run, all that you have to do is just download the Docker file that I'm going to be releasing into the cloud, just compile it, build your Docker image, and then switch it on the fly. So also the downtime, it's going to be hopefully very, very little. Anyway, without further ado, I spent already too much time and hopefully I haven't confused you even more. And let's switch straight away on to this uh, five minutes of the tutorial as I think this is exactly how long it's going to get. So first of all, I just want to show you that uh, uh, my Raspberry Pi is still here, it's still turned on. This is exactly how, we left, how we la I left it like a couple of days ago. It's still running um, uh, very nicely. So let's go back to this screen and this is where I left it the other day. So I'm going to be uh, SSHing into it. That is exactly the same IP address as I left last time. Ubuntu is the new user and the password is still Raspberry. That's it. Once that we are on the um, on the Raspberry Pi, let's go on our guide that it is always available at Cardano Staking uh, on the Speedwing organization, Cardano Staking Pool EU. Let's refresh the pages already refreshed, and this is uh, the current um, uh, the current uh, um, documentation for this episode. So. Um, there is just a little bit of an introduction. I recommend you to go and look in Docker and this is how to install Docker. And the most important thing that you should be aware of is that there are at least two different ways of installing Docker. There is the apt-get way or there is the sudo snap. 
um, or Snap uh, um, way of doing it. Snap is a, is a new packet manager uh, for uh, Ubuntu. Um, I found it just like extremely easy to use. Um, and uh, for the purpose of this uh, tutorial that we're trying to make everything nice and easy, I would definitely recommend to go down this way. So all that we're gonna do is basically is sudo snap install docker. If you want to know more in, in, uh, about snap, um, the Ubuntu Foundation has um, the canonical website that is like the company behind the Ubuntu has a very nice uh, um, uh, page that tells you everything about Snap. They have lots of things. One of these is uh, uh, Kubernetes itself that I'm using on my Raspberry Pi's, uh, on my cluster of Raspberry Pi's. Uh, so there are lots of things that you can install straight away with Snap, and I would strongly recommend um, to to get familiar with it. Um, I'm gonna pause temporarily the video while this thing is installing and I'll see you in just a snap of the fingers. And we're back. Um, the Docker is now installed. So uh, this is uh, really nice. Um, the, how long it takes to install Docker really depends on uh, your internet connection um, and then the speed of the Pi in actually installing Docker itself. Now, if you if we try to access Docker from the Ubuntu user, it's gonna tell us that the permission is denied. This is because by default, if you install uh, Docker, it's only it can only be accessed by the sudo or root user. Um, so we don't want that because whenever we uh, launch Docker, um, uh, uh, we want we want to have access uh, from our ordinary Ubuntu user to Docker. Um, I will not uh, the discuss security and permissions of Docker. This is way too um, complicated topic to discuss as part of this tutorial. I may discuss this in another time, but uh, it's enough for us to know that uh, instead of switching to super user and interact with Docker, we, just, we should just uh, use, um, create a new group and add our uh, user Ubuntu to the group of users that is allowed to use Docker. Um, so also this one is explained, uh, is documented in, in, um, in, on, on the project in GitHub. So all that we're gonna be using is to uh, add uh, uh, the Docker group to system user. And we're gonna be uh, adding the user Ubuntu to the group uh, Docker. And then uh, we're gonna actually create uh, the, new, the new group. You can copy everything and then just slap it into the command line. Uh, this is now used. Uh, this is now done um, still if we do docker ps this is uh, not happening um, and this is because we need to basically restart the docker so we can just do this also here discussed uh, documented into into the project we we'll just do those two comments here it's gonna take like a couple of seconds uh, to restart uh, docker with the new uh, security profiles and at this point if we do docker ps Finally, we don't receive an error. Um, so the Docker PS command basically is um, a way of asking Docker to list all the workloads or containers that are actually running. Um, at the moment, there is nothing running, so the fact that it returns nothing is actually correct. So if you like, and we are finally at the end of this very short episode, uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. It should be very straightforward. Uh, if you have any issues, just uh, uh, write into the comment and try to respond to you, to answer to you. Please come and check out my uh, Twitter page, it's uh, CryptoJoe101. Um, uh, follow me and that's the quickest way you can connect to me. Um, comments in YouTube, they're also fine, but it, it's a little bit more cumbersome for me to uh, answer. And it's nice to have everything on Twitter as well, but uh, I'll try to do my best to respond on uh, um, YouTube as well. If you like the content, uh, please subscribe, um, hit that like button, and then if uh, you really, really appreciate what I'm doing here, uh, please consider, uh, and you, if you are a Cardano ADA owner, um, please consider to delegate to my stake pool. I'm still looking for uh, uh, um, delegators and grow my stake pool. As you, of course, know, my stake pool is running on a cluster of Raspberry Pis, and so far I have had 100% uh, minted blocks. So um, come and delegate to me. This is, uh, this is all for today. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next episode. Um, and I'll see you later. Bye.